was here tonight and told Obama about the Benghazi confrontation. In the morning, he's got to board a flight, got to head to Vegas to campaign for re election. He thinks of the ambassador along the way and how he put him there to run. Weapons into Syria. He hears Valerie Jarrett say, Hurry, Barack, Sin City waits for you. I got a plan to blame a video on YouTube. The same one that I mentioned to the UN and the view. And I said to stand down in Libya. Tonight, and told Obama about the Benghazi confrontation. In the morning, he's got to board a flight, got to head to Vegas to campaign for re election. He thinks of the ambassador along the way and how he put him there to run weapons into Syria. He hears Valerie Jarrett say, Hurry, Barack, Sin City waits for you. I got a plan to blame a video on YouTube. The same one that I mentioned to the UN and The View. And I said to stand down in Libya. I gotta buy me some time and hope America forgets. Now, uh, let me be clear. We're gonna do a full investigation on this. Secretary of State Clinton and I would love to answer questions, but at this point, what difference does it make? Gotta go. On this week's episode of According to Being Bunny, we're just gonna see how manly I am and other men are out there, according to the New York Times. Planned Parenthood makes an announcement and conservatives are satisfied with it. But why Sam and I are incredibly disappointed still. The asset of the week, of course, but we start talking about the Democratic debate last night. And if you think the GOP and the right has their problems, hoo-hoo, doggy. We discuss that now on According to Me and Bunny. Here's a story of Polita Bunny. Annoying liberals on Twitter was her goal. She had a radio show, and it was badass, with lots of fans and lots of trolls. Here's a story of a guy named Jason, who had an awesome internet talk show of his own. There were lots of voices on the air together, but he did it all alone. And one day Barney messaged him on Facebook, and they knew the NSA would be appalled. That these two would do a show together. And now you're about to hear what it is called. According to me. And Bunny. According to me. And Bunny. This This is is the theme song for According to to Me. And Bunny. From the Kensington Place Studios, it's According to Me and Bunny, Barack Obama. Mitch McConnell and Donald Trump's second most hated internet radio program. The two-hour show that lasts 60 minutes. And for those next 60 minutes, sit back, be prepared to be informed, entertained, possibly offended. Listening, of course, to According to Me and Bunny is mandatory. But pants, as you know, are always optional. Right, chat room? We know that's how that is here on ATMB. But welcome to the program, folks. I'm Jason Wilkins, And my co-host has returned from her one-week hiatus. And as Elton John once said... The bitch is back. 
Little bunny foo foo hopping through the internet, scooping up some liberals and bopping them on that. Sam Jenny out in the Wild West. Good evening, ma'am. The bitch is back. You know, you're really lucky that I like you, but that was actually really funny. It's good to be back. How are you? I'm doing well. Um, we got a lot to talk about in this week's show, Dude. but I'm, I've been unplugged. Wait. I've been, I have Cubs fever. I'm a Cub oh. fan lifelong. I've been just watching baseball um, and, you know, drinking heavily with my <laughs> hand down my pants. But other than that, that's Thanks, about I all I've done. I have known about what, no. <laughs> Dude. Your mom is in the chat room. Well, she knows. Trust me. She is. I mean, she raised you. It, it, absolutely. Right. That's absolutely correct. But uh, welcome That's to the fair. program, guys. We got so much stuff to talk about this week. Um, let's just dive right into it. But I missed Sam last week. Of course, we were busier than hell, um, both of us last week. And uh, Sam was off, had personal things going on. Like I said in the show last week, Money Without You, you know, <gasps> we have a personal life. It's crazy, right? I know. How dare we have a life outside of what we do I know. for the radio and, you know, and Twitter and blogging and being a mom. And yeah, you know, it was cool, though. I was actually speaking at a disability conference last week. And I was speaking on language, and it was really good. It went really well. So cool. It was That's good. I was sad watching. To be gone, but it was very good to go do that. And see, while you were doing something that was of value, while you were doing something that was important to the people in your community and in your state, <laughs> I was watching the Cubs play the Pirates on television. So. Both of us sacrificed a lot that day. Um, But uh, for those of you who did listen to the show last week, I got a little uh, ranty and ravey on a couple things. But thanks for being here, guys. And no, I know. It's weird. I'm a mild mannered, very quiet, very, very shy person. You're introverted, dude. Yeah. And uh, (laughs) (laughs) it's absolutely true. But so we're going to talk on the program this week. We're going to find out how much of a man I am. How much right. of a man Sam thinks her husband is, and if you are gentlemen out there, or ladies for that matter, I want you, here's your homework assignment, you have plenty of time, I honestly want you to keep score, because I want you to see, according to the New York Times, how much of a man you really are, mm-hmm. it's going to be appointment radio, folks, you don't want to miss that, plus, Planned Parenthood, like I was said in the, in the tease in the beginning of the show, there's a big announcement, right? A lot of conservatives yeah. are like, oh, well, that's cool, really? Mm-hmm. I'm pretty disappointed and kind of still pissed off about it. And I know Sam is as well. Yeah. And, um, of course, we got the ass head of the week. But let's start. You have a big announcement, Sam. And we start off the show always with the big topic. And I'm right. going to get out of the way, Sam, because you have a big announcement. And I know that you mentioned it on Twitter earlier. And I have some involvement. We'll talk about that in a bit. But, uh, mm. Sam, go ahead. I mean, the, the audience you know, is here. The audience is waiting. They're listening. Have at I'm it. so excited. And, you know, I know the the – the GOP field is so limited right now. There's so few candidates. Um, last night I was watching a Democratic debate, and uh, one of, I think, I don't remember who asked Hillary, but they asked her and they said, Hillary, how do we know you won't be a third term for Obama? And she said, well, because I'm a chick. Yeah, you know, go feminism. So basically, what that tells me is all I really need to run for president is a vagina. So yeah. I'm good to go. I have one of those. So I've decided. <sighs> That I'm going to run for president in 2016. All right. Yes, ladies and gentlemen. It's about time. The whole vagina thing is really usually kind of a not a great thing, but you know, according to Hillary Clinton, that qualifies me to be president and leader of the free world. So, vaginas are us. I am running for president. Now, wouldn't that make Carly Fiorina also qualified? I'm curious Mm, what Hillary says about that. The thing is with Carly. She's kind of got an older vagina. Maybe that's the difference. Oh, I don't know. But yeah. I'm going to go ahead and run oh. based on the fact that Hillary says all I really need to be um, to be president is to have a vagina. Well, and let plus me... I want to see how many times I can see vagina on the show because okay. I know that will push our search engine way up. So I'll all right, folks. So again. in the chat room, um, some of you that are in there, um, I'm sure some of you is going to keep count. So it's what three yeah. times at least you've said that. <laughs> Vagina, probably not. Well, that's four. Like nine times. The more times we say vagina, the, the quicker that our show will pop up when people search for vagina. I think so we're just going to name the show. I know we, <laughs> we already had a show name. I think we're just going to call it hashtag vagina. Hashtag vagina. That'll yeah, just be the name of the show. Bunny 2016 hashtag, hashtag vagina. vagina. Yeah, that's not a do. bad idea. I think we should run with that. That's a I really good idea. Speaking of run with that, so you've already listed your cabinet on Twitter. I saw this. I did. And would you like to tell the fine folks what 
absolute like third rate minor league half assed position you've nominated me for? I said you would be a good press secretary because you know. Angie has to be my VP because she'll keep me in line because I tend to be a little, I don't know, aggressive. So she would keep me in line. Paul would be a great Secretary of State, which was really funny, though, because he said, which state? You know? Exactly. And I was like, well, you know, <laughs> the fact that you're still smarter than Kerry is really funny. And then Daniel Stafford is my Secretary of Defense because he's a badass. But, you know, it makes sense that you would be the secretary, press secretary, because, you know, you're kind of like my secretary when we do the show. Oh, sure. So that makes sense, don't you think? Well, in this way, as your press secretary, I can make sure that uh, I wish you good night on Twitter every night like a lot of your followers do. (laughs) Um, you know, so. um, yeah, you're just jealous because they wish me good night. They don't even know when you go to bed. Yeah, uh, Sid, I see. You, I can Sid, count. Sid, 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 I could be an amputee with no secretary. Hold on, go he ahead. wants to be the secretary of my navy. So, Sid, you're it, man. You're okay, the secretary you of my navy. He's in the I, chat room. I could no, be. Go ahead, an, I'm sorry. I could be an amputee with no arms and legs and be able to count on the amount of limbs that I would have at that point of the amount of dudes that would wish me good night on Twitter. Just saying. Ain't, but anyway. Ain't nobody. You know, you need boobs, Jason. We've <laughs> talked about this well, multiple it's, it's, times. I'm going to hook up with Caitlyn Jenner, and we're going to see what we can do. Um, and maybe that's an RWNJ funding uh, 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 option that's out there. I know that, uh, you know, we got some GoFundMe <laughs> opportunities. They're a great sponsor of the show. Maybe we do that. Maybe we work on that. Yeah, absolutely. Let's do that. But. Lots to talk about. We're going to start, of course, talking about... By the way, Sam, congratulations. Um, you. you know, Oh, and uh, Slick wants to be the CIA. Sure, Slick, you can be the director of the CIA. There you go. I got a great cabinet. I got some badass. We, we already have some good people assembled, and thank you. Yeah. And, and uh, we need yard signs and pins, and we'll put that up maybe on the Polititainment website, maybe, that you could buy. I that don't know. Work. Maybe you speak it into action, and Josh it happens. Ernest. We'll call you Jason Josh Ernest. Oh, for God's sake. That um, says... But... Let's talk the Democratic debate, because here's here's who your competition will be, Sam. These are the folks you're going to be going up against. And, Sam, you may not know everything you need to know about a lot of the inner workings of Washington, but compared to that clown show, oh boy, you have no problem going up there. But um, you, know, you suffered genius. through most of the debate. Um, I couldn't. I was watching the Cubs celebrate, of course, a, a monstrous and amazing victory last night. But I did listen to the audio in my car. Um, and I did pull over and vomit a couple times, and, and I did get into a car accident as a result. But I did listen to the audio, and Sam, let's just, you know, this unscripted, unbullet pointed, just let's, let's discuss, let's talk here. What were your thoughts that you saw last night in regards to it, and um, just your well, overall thoughts on it? Okay, so I had to be honest. Um, I made it through about an hour of it before my head started spinning, and I was ready to vomit pea soup. It was really that bad. But I will tell you this. Anderson Cooper really impressed me. I thought for sure it being CNN, they would be all smoochy, smoochy with the Democrats. And he was really grilling them. Cooper was really thing, good. Yeah, but the thing was, he's doing it. He's, he's giving them all these questions, and they don't answer anything he asks them. Like, he could say, Hillary, you have gone back and forth on the LGBTQ XYZ population oh. over the last two decades. You've been for them and against them and for them and against them. And, you know, how do you expect us to take you seriously? Blah, blah, blah. And she's like, thank you for your question. I think the middle class needs jobs. Blah. <laughs> it's like, wait a second. You said nothing. And then he called her on it. He's like, well, you know, you didn't really answer my question. And then she went into, like, women and now women need to be equals and have equal pay. She never really answered him but she wasn't the only one who didn't uh bernie didn't answer him either now you know the bernie sanders people are like he did he answered them but he really didn't you know he was asking about the middle east and um bernie's like well climate change is a real problem (laughs) you know it was just and that's why they don't have jobs that's why they're (laughs) upset because of climate change they don't got jobs yeah you know i will tell you though i was really impressed with jim webb and I was so impressed with him that I was trying to barter with the DNC. I was offering them a trade. I was like, look, we'll give you Donald Trump. We'll give you Lindsey Graham. We'll give you Jeb Bush. And we'll give you John Boehner if we can have Jim Webb. And Jim, Jim Webb, Webb won't stand a chance. Not a is, chance. You know, Jim is more conservative than Donald on Donald's most conservative day. Oh, sure. But And he won't deserve it. And that's the thing that I took away when I listened to it. And I'm curious your thoughts on this, Sam. You always hear the left say, well, if Ronald Reagan ran today, he wouldn't <laughs> be, be conservative Democrat. enough. 
because these crazy Republicans, they oh. Ronald Reagan would be a far left Democrat in the eyes of these crazy people. Well, uh -huh. let me say this. JFK, Bill Clinton, and hell, you could make the argument, and I'm going to, that 2008 Obama isn't left enough for the people on stage last night. Seriously. No, it was know. amazing. If you think about... Seriously, I mean, say what you want about Obama, but at least in 2008, those who really peeled back the onion, we knew what a what a socialist guy this, you know, Obama was. But those right. who just listened to the debates and the speeches, like the average Joe, went, eh, yeah. he seems semi-moderate. And that's the typical strategy that all parties play. The Republicans will well. vote for a John McCain or a Mitt Romney, and they put that guy up there because he's a middle-of-the-road guy who gets his ass kicked. And Democrats usually that. will try to do the same thing. And what's so they funny is now you have a situation in which you have a socialist on stage who tells you he is, and then <laughs> Hillary Clinton, who's trying to show how far to the left she is of him. It's amazing. It was funny, and, and it was Ben Shapiro, who I have to give credit for this because it was really funny. He was making fun of the whole debate, and, he, and he's like, Bernie, I'll give you free education. Hillary, I'll give you free birth control. Bernie, I'll give you free education again. And then it's funny. Oh, yeah, we'll give more free stuff than you'll give, and I'll give more free stuff than your free stuff. And it became, you know, who can give away the most free stuff? It was actually really clever and funny. The, I thought the most interesting question of the night, though, was when they asked Bernie about gun control in Vermont. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, he has voted against gun control. Vermont really has, like, zero gun laws. They're, like, the only state besides Wyoming that is has, like, minimal gun laws. Wyoming goes, damn, they have little gun laws. I mean, that's how little gun laws they have. And he's like, well, how can you say you're anti-gun when you've done this and this? And Bernie actually gave a decent response. He's like, you know, when I came into office in 1988... I was in junior high when he did, by the way. But when I came into office, it was really, you know, this was what was going on with my people, and this is how it's always been in our state. And, you know, I think if they're legal gun owners, they have a right to sell guns. Now, I think if they're doing it the wrong way, we should stop that. I was like, oh, my God, the socialist is the only one who gets it. You know, no, it was absolutely. Really, he, he was, was kind of weird. He was way more pro-Second Amendment than Hillary by a mile. By a mile. Hillary. Hillary was ridiculous. But you know what's funny you is know, you remember Hillary. Do you remember the 2008 campaign with Hillary and Barack in which Barack was semi-tough on guns and Hillary yeah. was like, I like to go hunting, y'all. So I understand why it's important to have a hunter's rifle, and I ain't going to take that away. And remember Obama making fun of her saying, uh, she's uh, all of a sudden Annie Oakley out there. Don't you know, do that. That's so but scary. that happens – this was seven years ago. It's terrifying. What it's amazing to this, me. Though? 2008, Obama's like, I believe you need to do this. I believe marriage between a man and a woman. You can I do believe, it uh, I you know, when it comes down to it. He evolves. He's like, hey, gay marriage is the shit, you know. Right. It, it, they're just so full of it. And the best answer from Hillary was so funny because they asked her if she was a progressive. And she's like, I most certainly am a progressive, but I'm a progressive who can get elected. And I just died. That was the dumbest thing. It's I, uh, I, To me, it know, was amazing. The, the thing that I also saw when I took away, and this is, again, I didn't get to see the, 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 the video. I just heard the audio. In my mind, um, and I'm curious your thoughts on this, Sam. Um, oh. CNN said, oh, she, oh, man, did you see Hillary? Woo, man, she looked presidential. She is back, baby. You could see that she's ready to roll. That's what CNN said. But yet yeah. you'll see an article that came out this morning that Facebook and Google, based on search results and posts and tweets and all of that stuff, clearly show that Bernie Sanders won the debate amongst the people who were paying attention. Which one do you think is right? Is CNN right? Or yeah. was social media essentially right? Hillary seemed um, like defensive from the get-go. Like she was ready to be pissed off no matter what they asked her. Bernie really just seemed like an old guy on stage talking. You know, and it was funny because the Lincoln Chaffee guy, I don't know who the hell is that guy, right? And O'Malley, he's beautiful. He really is a good-looking Democrat, but he has no business being a president. And Jim Webb, who was actually presidential, but no one really wanted to talk about. Bernie was just Bernie Sanders. 
And I think he destroyed her. And I, I see why she's losing. She is a freaking robot. Uh, I saw someone talk about how she didn't move her eyebrows or her forehead for like two hours because <laughs> she's, she's so Botoxed she's out. She's so bad. Her and folks, doesn't move. And here's the thing. I mean, we talk, we beat each other up, and rightfully so. Um, yes. On the right, but come on, guys. Tommy. There's no way. There's no way we do, um, you know, we, we have thing. W- there's no way unless we once again snatch victory uh, out of the, or excuse me, sm- snatch defeat out of the jaws of victory like the Republican yeah. Party typically does. There's no way we should have any concern over who's going to win the 2016 election. We have so many great candidates in comparison to these ass clowns. It's just amazing to me. I don't get it. But it's scary. It's scary. It, it is. But Trump is in the lead, and Trump loses swing states to every one of them but Chaffee and O'Malley. Oh, God. But before yeah. we get into uh, um, our, our next segment that we're going to talk about here, before we take a break, I wanted to once again recommend hooking up with our good friends, our guys at RWNJFunding.com. Like I said, apparently there's going to be a go or an RWNJ funding uh, campaign to uh, stop me from singing on the show. That's fine. As long as the bottom line goes to politatainment and it helps us grow, I'm fine with that. But here's the thing. Here's the thing I know that those who are in charge of RWNJFunding.com, they're going to see that campaign and go, you know, that's cool. And then there's going to be other campaigns that are out there going to say that's cool too because they don't cave to political pressure. They don't you know, buy into the PC police who get really pissed off. And that's why they're a great alternative. If you want to raise funds from friends or supporters, but with a, a a company that truly has your values and principles in mind. They don't play top politics with it at all. Go to rwnjfunding.com. And again, here's the way it works. The first 10 signups who uh, uh, raise 100 bucks, they get 10 bucks thrown into their campaign. Free money that goes to your cause. And if you want to check them out, again, go to rwnjfunding.com or go to politatainment.net, the little website good, uh, that could, and click on the Amazon banner at the top of the page. And you, too, will be able to uh, start funds to prevent me from singing on the show, apparently. But but it's hey, all well and good. Help a bunny out. You know, I actually might do my whole presidential campaign. They may become my CPAC, RW. That's a great Sunday. idea, yes. Yeah, right? Bunny 2016, sense. hashtag vagina. Vagina. All right, folks, when we come back from the break, get your pen and paper ready. We're going to be keeping score. You two play along at home. How manly are you, according to the New York Times? That's in next. Our best efforts to anger Bernie Sanders, and because we believe in capitalism, according to me and Bunny, we'll be back after these messages from our sponsors. All right, Politatainment Patriots, we're going to pull the audience here. Raise your hand if you know all that is to be known and all the ins and outs about workplace and employment law. Huh? Huh? There's only one guy with his hand raised. Well, that doesn't surprise me. But anyway, go ahead and ask me a question. What is it? Oh, who knows anything about workplace and employment law? I'm glad you asked. It's the guy raising his hand. Proud sponsor of Politatainment and an expert you can trust, Attorney Ted Hong. Are you an employee who's been fired or being denied benefits for being a crazy right-wing extremist? Or are you a business owner who wants to make sure the feds and unions don't come after you for non-compliant workplace regulations or labor contracts? Well, then you need Ted Hong. Ted's been doing this for over 30 years. Plus, him and his amazing legal team also handle family and property law and estate litigation. You need to call our guy, Attorney Ted Hong, at 808-933-1919 or visit tedhonglaw.com. Ted Hong, an experienced and principled attorney you can trust. 808-933-1919 or Ted honglaw.com conversation doesn't have to stop just because we aren't live on the air you know that's true chat with us before during and after every show by following us on twitter follow jason please i'm tired of him whining about it at atm underscore show yeah and follow sam on twitter at politabunny or don't follow her. It's not like she's going to notice. Plus, use the hashtag me and Bunny throughout the week, and we will read some of our favorite tweets you send on the air. Hey, listen, I don't think we should be promoting hashtags. I mean, that's a state's rights issue. Oh, brother. Follow Jason at ATM underscore show and follow me at Polita Bunny. This is John Greenhut, and if your teeth are stained from coffee, tea, or smoking, Power Swabs is the answer. In five minutes, you'll see two shades wider teeth, and in seven days, six shades. Even better, there's no messy strips or trays that you'll have to leave in your mouth for an hour. Just swab your teeth for five minutes, and you're done. To try Power Swabs, call 1-800-928-7113. Your bright white smile will have your friends talking about how great you look. Try it risk-free. 1-800-928-7113. That's 1-800-928-7113. 
Are you conservative in a world of liberal? Yep. 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 Mm -hmm. Well, you're not alone. Hey, I'm Daniel Stafford, host of the Stafford Voice, and I'd like to invite you to tune in each Monday, 10 p.m. Eastern, where I'll break down the events of the week, and together we'll learn about how they affect you. So sit back and get ready for the good, the bad, and the ugly of talk radio right here on K98 Talk. Hey, Sam, do you have any advice for those who miss our show when we're live every Wednesday night? Uh, yeah, they can stop hating America. Well, obviously, but besides that. Well, they can check out the podcasts. That's true. You can catch According to Me and Bunny podcasts on SoundCloud, on Stitcher, on Spreaker, on iTunes, on TuneIn. We get it. They can find us everywhere because I'm so freaking awesome. (sighs) It's always got to be about the bunny. Whatever. A tribute to Cecil the Lion, according to me. In the jungle, the mighty jungle, the lions. This has been a tribute to Cecil the Lion, according to me. According to me and Buddy, they keep it straight gangsta, yo. According to me and Buddy, never PC, never gluten free. Welcome back to the show, folks. Glad that you guys are still sticking with us. Thanks for being here. All right, get your pen and papers out ready. Sam, I know you're ready to go as well. Um, I'm giggling and- at that commercial, that Cecil the Lion thing. It's so screwed up, but it just makes me laugh every time. What's wrong with Sorry. it? It's it's touching. This it's a tribute. The lion in the jungle. <laughs> it's a tribute. I'm trying to be a decent human being and show my yes. compassion with you're PETA decent. and other animal lovers out throughout the world. And I don't understand why you're being so disingenuous about it. It kind of pisses I, me off. You know, off. it just cracks me up. This is happy little lion. <laughs> There's this gunshot. It kills me. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I don't I'm know sorry. what you're saying. I think you're trying to <laughs> think I'm being sarcastic, and I'm really not. When I, I really say am you're concerned. being sarcastic. No, no, no. But uh, no. but real quick shout out. Um, you know, Ted Hong, of course, is in the chat. And Ted, of mm-hmm. course, is also a proud sponsor of uh, Polititainment as a whole. And just an all-around great dude. Um, really so, uh, you know, awesome. we really, really appreciate his support. And if you happen to know of other business owners who wouldn't mind sponsoring shows that talk about vaginas and shooting Cecil the Lion, then come That's aboard. You're, we're more than welcome to, uh, uh, you know, have you sponsor our show. And uh, we try to share the love the best we can and uh, really do appreciate it because you guys do keep us on the air and every How little bit helps. How many vaginas is that? Oh, I don't even know. I'm sure somebody counting. Somebody needs to be counting. Okay, so Sam, are you ready? Speaking of counting, earlier. yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. Folks, I'm serious. Grab your pen and paper. I have I some questions I need to ask you. I know you do, Sam. I'm, I'm, I'm telling I'm the organized. audience here. Let's do All this. All right. So, Sam, you're married. Yes. I'm a guy. There and I, I swear, sorry. yeah. And then there are listeners out there who are men. And then there are listeners who are, who are out there who are women who have men in their lives. And so they should be able to answer these questions, too. But. Sure. This is, and we're going to try to get through all these as quick as we can, but I'm sure we're going to have some dialogue back and forth in regards to it. But these are the 27 uh, ways to be a modern man, according to the New York Times. Okay. Mm -hmm. And Uh this is going to, these are the ways that you know, really, you're a man of 2015. You are a man's man. And so oh, with that right. said, I want you to keep score at home. Is right. this me or no freaking way? There you go. There are your two choices, really. So point number one, according to the New York Times, when a modern man buys shoes for his spouse, he doesn't have to ask her sister for the size. He knows which brands run big or small. Now, what? as a man... Is this a joke? I swear to God, that's the first one. The modern man apparently automatically knows the <laughs> size shoes his wife wears. He didn't have to ask anybody, and he even knows the brands that run big or small. Now, I'll tell you, 
my husband does know what shoe size I wear in a man's shoe, but only because he buys me specialty Nikes. Oh, so he would be this guy. Yeah, that's Oh, scary. see, I'm nowhere close. I, I don't buy my wife any clothing whatsoever. Not shoes. Yeah. I think I bought her a jacket when we, when, well, I bought her a Columbia fleece. I think I've bought her maybe three articles of clothing in 13 years. I mean, Whoa. it's, yeah, okay. no, no way. No way All in right. hell. So I'll give Paul, I'll give him a point. Okay, so folks, All score right. at home with me right now. Paul is, I'm just saying. A modern man. Yeah, he's a modern yeah. man. I'm not. Number uh-huh. two, ready? The yeah. modern man never lets other people know when his confidence has sunk. He acts as if everything is going swimmingly until it is. Huh? So modern man keeps, I guess, his confidence uh, uh, is always brimming. Even if things are going really bad, things are good. I'm good. Everything's fine. That's basically what they're saying the modern man does. Mm, I think that's crap. I'm going to say no. That's not me at all. I am, no, I think uh, that's horrible. I wear my heart on my sleeve, and you know if I'm having a good day or not by the second you talk to me. Um, sure. So My husband's um, Irish. Eh. Well, there you go. So, yeah. okay, so there's that. Number three, ready? Yeah. The modern man is considerate. At the movie theater, he won't munch down a mouthful of popcorn during a quiet moment. He waits for some ruckus. Ah. <laughs> me? I'm chowing down some popcorn whenever I freaking feel like it. There you go. You know... I will open up my candy even if it's rattly. I don't even give a shit. So right, I'm I'm gonna say no. I'm, no point. Okay, so that's okay. That so I far of, oh, none of these have the described chat. me. Not one. All right. All right. Yeah. The modern man. No, no, this is number four. The modern man doesn't cut the fatty or charred bits off his fillet. Every bite of steak is a privilege, and it all goes down the hatch. Yes or no? Well, okay. I wouldn't say that he would say that steak is a privilege. But my man can eat a piece of meat. So I'm going to give him a point, but not because it's a privilege. Okay. I, if it's fatty or there's gristle, I'm throwing that crap out. I'm not touching that. I'm in Wyoming, dude. We probably, we uh, practically eat the things when they're alive. Not me. So not me. On. Sorry. Yeah. If it's, if it's, yeah. What the hell would you eat that for? Give it to the dog. <laughs> That's what it's for. All right. Number All five. Right. The modern man won't blow 10 minutes of his life looking for the best parking spot. He finds a reasonable one, and he puts his car between the lines. Yes or no? No. That's totally me. My husband me. will spend an hour finding a good parking spot. Really? Yeah. Not me. I. Uh, that's me, by the way. I will oh. absolutely park and park my car and go. walk my ass into where I need to go. And to be honest with you, depending on what vehicle he's driving, he, he's very picky where he parks it. Yeah. Really? Yeah, see, I care really? less. I couldn't care less. I park wherever. All right, I... so you get a point. You're there a you modern go. man. I am, I am a modern man in regards to that. Took five before I was that. Number six, before the modern man heads to bed, he makes sure his spouse's phone and his kid's electronics devices are charging for the night. No. See, that's me. I do that. I don't do that either. I, I don't even do that. So, no. so Paul's not that guy. What about you? Uh, hopefully, in the chat room, you guys are participating. You guys are. are letting us know because, again, we want to see how manly you really are. We'll tally up some scores here when it's all said and done. Okay. Angie wants to slap the modern man for no other reason than the name modern man. <laughs> well, I don't blame you. Now, here's one I don't necessarily agree with. Number seven: the modern right. man buys only regular colas like Coke or Dr Pepper. If you walk into his house looking for a Mountain Dew, he'll show you the door. No. I don't agree with that either. We have now, Fanta and that kind of stuff, so okay. I'd say no. See, I and I'm I'm I, I would agree with that too. I uh, I am a Coca Cola Classic guy with a bunch of ice. That's me. But I'm not going to mm-hmm. be like that's all I'm going to have in my house. Get the hell out of here if you want stuff like that. That's stupid. Hold on, manly. No, we have strawberry Fanta and Seven Up and all kinds of no. Okay, number no. eight. The modern man uses the proper names for things. For example, he'll say helicopter, not chopper. <laughs> So he'll use the proper name of things. He won't call it a chopper. He'll call it a helicopter. No. Yeah, no. I just call it whatever the hell this I feel is, like calling it. I swear this time. is... No, but okay. this, the, this is... The, what's so funny about this is this is serious, folks. Like, we laugh. But when I saw this, now this I saw the last week before Sam and I had a break, and I'm like, look, we are talking about this because this is the most horrific, stupid thing I've ever seen in my life. It's absolutely it's ridiculous. Was- I want to find this modern man, like Angie said, and just throat punch him. Absolutely. Well, let's keep going. Maybe we'll throat punch him some more. Number nine. Sweet. Go ahead. Having a daughter makes the modern man more of a complete person. He learns new stuff every day. 
he now you know i don't like how it's phrased i think it's phrased like really stupid but i know that my husband you know we have a son and a daughter and i know he he cherishes them each for different reasons and i do know that having a daughter like ours is is definitely teaching him things sure i can tell you i can tell you as a as a father of four children three boys and then my youngest is a girl um Mm -hmm. absolutely that's true um (laughs) my she uh, i learn more about life every single day and uh you know, wouldn't change it for the world. She's amazing. And I would well, say that, um, yeah, point. total difference, total difference in just the way I am as a parent and yeah. just as a human being, quite frankly, with a daughter. So I agree with that it's 100%. True. And at least you admit it. Like my son could be like, yeah, this chicken, he's in third grade now. She's all staring at me. I think she likes me. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> And he's like, Daisy's like, yeah, there's this guy that kind of stared at me. You're never going to school again. Yeah, you know, it's that's, like that's completely different. I haven't gotten that far yet, but I'm sure that's going to happen. It's coming. Number 10. The modern man makes dishes or the modern man makes sure the dishes on the rack have dried completely before putting them away. Yes. See, I don't. He'll do that. See, well, my husband's a Virgo and like he's way pickier about everything in the house being cleaner than I am. I'll give him a point. Yes. Okay. Number 11. The modern man has never pinned a tweet and he never (laughs) will. So, of course, what I think they mean by this is, you know, uh, 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 the modern man has never used Pinterest. That's what I'm getting out of this. I don't know what you get. Um, I think that saying that that he doesn't pin a tweet, you know, because like on Twitter, you can pin a tweet. Oh, can you? Okay. Well, I I can tell you. See, my husband hates Twitter. Right. He gets a point there. So, and and yeah, that's certainly not, or that, that's definitely me. I, I will not, I don't know of a man of any heterosexual persuasion. Sorry. I'm just going to say it. (laughs) That actually uses Pinterest. I'm sorry. I'm just going to say it. It's just, that's true. Um, so, number 12. I gave him a point. Go ahead. Yeah, I have that too. Number 12, right. the modern man checks the status of his Irish spring bar before oh, jumping in for a wash. Too small, it gets swapped out. My husband doesn't use bar soap, so no. Okay. I'm going to say no because I will use bar soap, but I'm the kind of guy, there could be a collection of 17 in the bathroom, <laughs> and I will meld them together as one like mega bar and use it. <laughs> Stafford so is in the chat. He just I don't know what you said, but he just wrote fuck off, Jason. <laughs> I wonder well, if Stafford has Pinterest. <laughs> oh, Stafford has to have Pinterest. Sorry, D Saf, it's the truth. I don't write the rules, I just enforce them. That's absolutely true. By the way, number thirteen. The modern man listens to Wu Tang at least once a week. No. I haven't listened to Wu Tang in my entire life. Let I alone once a week. Listen to it. But not once a week. That's so stupid. So, number 14. The modern man still jots down his grocery list on a piece of paper. The market is no place for his face to be buried in the phone. No. I like My husband will grocery shop for me, but he says, just text me what you need. Yes, I'm the same way. I actually like to grocery shop, but the problem is I have ADHD in a grocery store like no other. Yeah, so I'm the kind of person who's like, oh, hey, that soup looks nice. I haven't seen that before. What's this? And I'll just, even though I'm not there for soup, I'll, you know what I mean? Like, I'm that guy. So you got to look in this chat room. I am dying. I'm sorry. <laughs> staff, is, staff has settled down a little bit, but he does have a Pinterest. Uh, uh, Sydney well, says, Daniel. Wu-Tang is nothing to fuck with. <laughs> wow, there's lots of curse words from Daniel. Daniel, see, Daniel's like me on the air. We're both, we come off very... Calm and collected, very matter of fa- very plain spoken, very gentlemanly, and then behind the scenes, <laughs> we all know better. But anyway, right. Number fifteen: the modern man has hardwood flooring. His children can detect his mood from the stamp of his Kenneth Cole Oxfords. We do have hardwood flooring, but he does not wear that crap. No. <laughs> See, that's I don't have Kenneth Cole anything. Nor I have I, Kenneth Cole shoes. He does not. Right. And I don't know of a guy. And I wear dress shoes every day and still. I don't have Kenneth Cole Be Oxfords. careful of the whole, I don't know a guy, or I don't know a heterosexual guy who wears Kenneth hey, Cole. Hey, look. I stand by what I said, damn it. You might get and, in trouble in that chat Oh, well. Oh, darn. Hey, I speak the truth. That's why you come to listen to you according to me and Bunny. <laughs> Whatever. That was awesome. That truth was so spoken. There's, I'm Go telling ahead, I'm you. Sorry. Someone has to back me up on this besides... You know, Look, there's... Anyway, anyway, go ahead. Sorry. That's BS, and you know it. 
And if you're being honest with yourself, you realize what I'm saying is absolutely true. Number 16, the modern man lies on the side of the bed closest to the door. If an intruder no. gets in, he will try to fight him off so that his wife has no. a chance to get away. No. Yeah, see, that's not I me. I sleep by the door. So do, What's well, really funny My is wife sleeps closer to the door than I do, but yeah. So that's not me either. There was a comedian, and the comedian talks about how he has his wife on the side of the bed so that if someone breaks into the door, he can she can fling her at him so he can figure out how to use his knife before the guy gets in there. The door. See, now that's a good strategy. <laughs> <laughs> now this no, this I'm may be the, the worst door. one. Are you ready? Yeah. I'm the sorry. modern man has or does the modern man have a melon baller? Question mark. What do you think? How else would he? How else would the cantaloupe, watermelon, and honeydew he serves be so uniformly shaped? My husband wouldn't even know what a melon baller is. I know what they are, but I would never own one or use one in my you entire life. You know what life. a melon baller is? Well, no. I don't know any straight guy who knows what a melon right. baller is. Right. Okay. Jason. You could, and I I know what it is, but I've never used one nor would I ever buy one ever. Lots of nopes, nopes, nopes. No melon ballers in the in the chat. That even know what it is or that they use. That they don't well, they haven't said that. They're just saying they don't have a melon ball. But they have baller, Pinterest so, accounts. Like I said, so. Who no, am I to judge? They have Pinterest accounts. Totally manly. They're on the Pinterest. <laughs> anyway, number 18. The modern man has thought seriously about buying a shoehorn. What? I, no. would, I would go with that one. You have a shoehorn? I don't, but I would buy one. Wait. Okay, so you're saying no straight dude would have a Pinterest, but you'd buy a shoehorn. And you, and you know what a melon baller is. I know what a melon baller is. Hey, I'm not judging, man. To okay. each his own. Just say it. Anyway, uh -huh. number 19, the modern man buys fresh flowers more to surprise his wife than to say he's sorry. Yes. That's absolutely true for me as well. I think yes. I've bought sorry flowers maybe once. I've never gotten <laughs> sorry flowers. Oh, really? Never. Number I always 20. get just, hey, look, you didn't expect them flowers. <laughs> <laughs> number 20, on occasion, the modern man is the little spoon. Some nights when he is feeling down or vulnerable, he needs an emotional and physical shield. No. No, I agree. Okay. No, I do believe you get your ass kicked in Wyoming for that. <laughs> I would no. agree. Number 21. The modern man doesn't scold his daughter when she sneezes while eating an apple donut, even if the pieces fly everywhere. No. My husband, no, that's my husband. He would just giggle and, you know, tell her to pick up. It would never be a trouble thing, no. Right. So that's a yes, then. That actually that's would a yes. be a yes. Yeah, yeah, he okay. would never... Yeah. We're Number good. 22. The modern man still ambles half naked down his driveway each morning to scoop up a newspaper. Who the hell still gets newspapers? I actually get a Sunday newspaper. That's it. I don't get it every day, but I do and get a Sunday paper. Would get a shoehorn and you know what a melon ball Oh, is. getting a newspaper does that. Shut your mouth. All I'm saying <laughs> is when I go to the newspaper, I will say that actually uh, 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 represents <laughs> me pretty well. I will walk out to t-shirt and boxer shorts and walk to my mailbox and get my freaking newspaper on a Sunday morning. That I can tell. We don't. Yeah. No, that's not us. No, that's not him. Number 23. The modern man has all of Michael Mann's films on Blu-ray. Who the hell is Michael Mann? I have Mann? no idea. And you know me. I don't have, know of what any movies, movies really. So, who am I? Michael I'm Mann's kind of movies. Who is yeah. it? Michael Mann. I don't even know who that is. I have no idea either, I, but that shouldn't surprise you. Um, number 24, the modern man doesn't get hung up on his phone battery percentage. If it, if it runs flat, so be it. Nope. Yeah, that's, 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 that's nope. not It's just got to be charged. Yeah, mm -hmm. me too. I'm the same way. This is the worst. Ready? Number 25, ah. the modern man has no use for a gun. He doesn't own one and he never will. Yeah, that's that's not my husband. No. Yeah, we are that's, an armed people in Wyoming. Yeah. No. Number 26, the modern man cries. He cries often. No. I will cry. No. I will admit no. that. I don't cry often, but I will cry. I admit, admit that on the show. Absolutely. But I don't, well, I, know, I don't like, you staff, know, watch a commercial and cry, you know, like that kind of thing. Staff thinks I should just get you to admit you're gay on the air here finally because he's okay, saying. Okay, sure. You know. Well, I don't have a Pinterest account, D staff. Just saying, number 27. People aren't sure if the modern man is a good dancer or not. That is, until the DJ plays his jam and he goes out there and puts on a clinic. Everybody knows my husband can dance. Okay. And I would, I would put me in that category, too. So here's my final score. Okay. Eight of those 27 are me. 18 are not. How many are you? Eight. That's how many my husband got. Really? So Okay. Yeah. So eight of those are me. The other 19, I'm sorry, would not be me. 
How did you score at home, folks? And isn't this the most insane, stupid thing you've ever heard in your entire life? Um, the fact that that's what the New York Times. I mean, we have fun, we kid. But did if a that woman is write the, that? no, it was a guy. A guy wrote. A guy that? wrote that. Let me tell you his name. If you want, we could make this should be ass hat of the week material. Oh, I don't Let's have find it. Him. But he's in DeKalb, Illinois. He's a guy who has three uh, children, and he wrote this piece for the New York Times. This is a guy. This is not a girl or a woman or anybody. This is a guy who wrote this piece. Just ridiculous. No, modern day men don't have to have a freaking checklist to tell them that they're men. If no. you need a checklist to determine if you're a man or not, you're not. That is so insulting. It's really funny. I mean, I laughed my ass off when I read it, and I knew it'd be funny back and forth. But the fact that this person thought that this was clever or charming or in any way represented what makes a man a man proves he's not a man. No, I agree. It's it's it, and that's why I figured we had to talk about it because I think the the people listening, of course, would have fun with it. And it's absurd. And speaking of absurd, Sam, last week you missed it. We've we've talked about what the modern man needs. Honestly, if we're being honest, is they need this week's Amazon.com product of the week. That's what they this need. This is not forced gay by aliens. No, it's again, we've talked right? about forced gay by aliens, and that is a must own. We've talked about the goatee saver template. Remember, that was our last mm-hmm, show you mm-hmm, and I did. It mm-hmm. was great. Last week, Sam, do you remember Clippy from Microsoft yes. Word? Yes. Yeah, there's, a, there's, an, there's an erotic tale called Conquered by Clippy. Um, yeah. It's two ninety nine on Amazon.com. It's NC-17, right. so it is for mature audiences only. Um, dirty, dirty. <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> I don't know if you've ever had fantasies about being conquered by Clippy, but if oh, you God. have, this book is for you. But... The modern man needs this week's Amazon.com product of the week. And, of course, the way you can get this product is go to politatainment.net and click on the Amazon banner at the top of the page. But this week's uh, product of the week is Westminster butt face soap. And here's how it works. Wait, wait, what? Yeah, it's it's butt face soap. And this happens to me all the time, which is why it's a great product. Spell it, butt face. B-U-T-T space uh-huh. F-A-C-E. And somebody so in the like chat room, if you want to put the link face. up there, like butt face, yeah. It's butt okay. face soap. And here's how it works. It's real soap. This isn't a joke. This isn't a gag. This happens to me if you use bar soap like I do. You know, you're, you're washing one side. You know, you're washing the soap and, you know, you're washing your face and other parts. And then you wash all parts of your body, you know, and you go near the butt region. And then maybe and- you do the butt region before the face and you go oh crap did i just wash you know the same side of soap all over the place you know that can easily be confusing when you get butt face soap one side of it's for your butt the other side's for your face so you never get confused no because it happens to me a lot It's color-coded, clearly labeled in the soap it says butt on one side and face on the other yeah you so, know, and Christmas is coming up. You may Christmas, have that hard to shop for guy. Right absolutely. Now. If you have a person who's hard to shop for, if you <laughs> need butt face soap like I do, and so many listeners do, go to politatainment.net, go to the Amazon banner at the type in the, uh, top of the page, type in butt face soap once you get to Amazon.com. And when you buy your butt face soap for $6 on Amazon, with free shipping, by the way, you butt will also face. be helping support your little friends at politatainment.net, which we certainty do appreciate it. And of course, according to me and Betty. And your face won't smell like butt. Yeah, and that's a good thing. And speaking of that's, face smelling like butt... You scare me. Quick quick break. We're going to talk Planned Parenthood and the ass out of the week that's coming up next here on According to Me and Buddy. Barack Obama and Mitch McConnell's second most hated internet radio program will be right back. Don't go anywhere or I'll find you. While you're liking dozens of cat memes and pictures of people's food, make sure you like us on Facebook. And we know you're on Facebook. We get your Candy Crush requests. But good idea, Bunny. Like the According to Me and Bunny show on Facebook simply by searching for According to Me show and click like. We share all the latest updates about the show, plus our favorite news stories, so like us. Hey, Sam, don't you have your own Polita Bunny Facebook page? Yes, like my page, too. Find me on Facebook and like the GOP Bunny page. GOP Bunny page? Ugh. That's awful. Why would you do that? I have wanted to change it for years, but Mark Zuckerberg is a fascist bigot pig. Anyway, Facebook.com slash According to Me Show and Facebook.com slash GOP Bunny. 
<laughs> Bunny and Boehner sitting in a tree. K I S S. Okay, okay. It's happening and nothing can stop it. It's the dramatic reinvention of Top Tight Radio. Here come the Spa Dolphins. The only thing that can cure racism is Robert E. Lee's penis. Who named this cat? Limber but McCubbin. A Trump Biden debate. Plugs versus rugs. <laughs> <laughs> Real serious nonsense. The show's so bad, you'll laugh at us. The worst podcast. We obviously hold that title. Mondays, 9 p.m. Eastern, K98 Talk. According to me and Bunny, where listening is mandatory, but pants are always optional. And Bobby. Welcome back to the show, folks. Coming down the home stretch, a couple really quick things before I uh, turn it over to Sam to talk a little Planned Parenthood and give us up to speed on a couple things that have happened. Um, for those of you who, of course, are, of course, you're listening according to me and Bunny, part of the Polititainment Net, dot, or Polititainment family and Polititainment.net, of course, our amazing website, which you should check out. But even though he's, you know, calling me awful names and saying, you know, throwing F bombs at me in the chat room, you should listen to our good friend uh, Daniel Stafford of the Stafford Voice on at 10 p.m. Eastern every single Monday. Monday night, and of course, he's on right after Angie and Powell of Real Serious Nonsense. And to stick around tonight, by the way, because yours truly is actually going to be producing uh, The Right Angle with Bill and Leslie coming up after us. So uh, that they're also part of the politatainment tree of family here on K98 uh, talk.com. So we're glad that uh, you guys uh, are listening to our show, but check out other shows as well. And check out other shows on K98 because we love you for it, I think. And <laughs> And, uh, you know, last but not least, um, Sam, a lot yeah. of conservatives are going, hey, you know, I mean, you know, Planned Parenthood, at least we we got him to do something right. Yeah, and I'm sitting you know, here going, uh, if you think yeah, that's no. victory, you're sadly mistaken. Sam, what are your thoughts on the big announcement you want to share with everybody in case they're not up to speed on the big announcement from Planned Parenthood? Yeah, before I do that, though, really quick, I want to give a shout-out to Grouchy, who is on right before us. Um, oh, yeah, it's Grouch true. on the conservative curmudgeon. He is – he literally knows what he's talking about. He's not just funny like we're dorks. He actually knows what he's talking about. So if you get a chance, listen to Grouch before us because he really is a great show. And I just want to give him a shout-out because he's always so good to us, too. He is. That's uh, a good call. Planned Parenthood. Okay, so, you know, remember when the videos came out and they're like, oh, we don't do that. We, we don't sell body parts, blah, blah, blah. They denied it. Then they attacked the videos. Then they attacked the people making the videos and they said the videos were fake. So now they've said, well, we weren't doing it. We didn't know we couldn't do it, but we're not going to do it anymore. So basically, Planned Parenthood has said we will no longer sell body parts. Like this is some big deal. I get it. You know, they're, they're admitting they've been doing it. They're going to say they're not going to do it anymore. What's going to happen is they're going to donate these parts, and then people will donate money back to them. This really is not a win. A real win would be an audit of their services and an audit of their monies to see where their dollars are going from the federal government. That would be a win. This is really just lip service. This is their public relations going, you know, this whole body part thing is a big deal. If you just say, hey, we're not going to sell them anymore, then you can stop that. We'll just give it away for research. And in the meantime, these other people can just donate money, you know, because it's a nonprofit. So it's still doing the same shit. They're just calling it something different. And then PR goes, yay, we win. This really isn't a win. A win would be the feds going, hey, we're giving you a lot of money, and we want to see how you're spending it. Because you know what's happening? While they're all like, hey, we're not going to do this anymore, they are fighting to repeal the Hyde Amendment. Do you know what the Hyde Amendment is? I do, but share it with the listeners who don't. The Hyde Amendment was passed, I think, in 1976 by a guy named Hyde, Chucker, and it says you cannot use federal dollars via Medicaid to pay for abortion. Now, if someone needs a medical abortion and they're on Medicaid, that's different. But what, what the law says is it says you cannot use abortion as birth control and the government will not pay for it. So this is where they're getting in trouble because it's pretty obvious they're not spending the money the way they're supposed to. When Cecil Richards said that 86% of their revenue is from abortion, clearly it's not just 3% of what they're doing. 
So instead of trying to fix what's going on, they're trying to repeal the Hyde Amendment. In the meantime, they give us something shiny saying, hey, we're not selling body parts anymore. Repeal the Hyde. And we have I, got to keep an eye on the Hyde Amendment, what, and we've got to get them audited. You're absolutely right. And here's the thing that drives me nuts about it. I love the, well, okay, so you're against abortion, but what if a woman was raped and she's going to die if she doesn't get an abortion <laughs> Are you against it then? Huh? Ha ha. Oh, oh, you're against that? Wow, you must hate women. Listen, do we are we living in 1812? Oh god. What the hell how many people die of giving birth to a child? They'll what minuscule percentage? It doesn't exist. They Stop. will try their damnedest to convince you more women are dying in childbirth than in via botched abortions. This is who these people are. And, you know, if, if they throw that rape thing at you, if they throw that health thing at you, most legislation, of course, exempts rape or medical procedures. It just does. Right. You well, know, they just want to paint the you as a, as a... Is, no more birth control hags. If you make a mistake, own your mistake. That's it, all the law really does. Right. All, they just want to paint you as a... Two percent of less combined is health and rape. So 98% of abortions are out of convenience. It's horseshit. Sure, Done. fine. How about this? Let's agree I'll pay for the 2% of rape and possible death of a woman if they have childbirth. How's that? Fine. You got me. I'll sign up for that one. When you, well, in turn, sign up for the other 98% that aren't paid by me. Deal? Deal. These Fine. hyenas, though, are like, it's my business. It's none of your business. Quit asking us to pay for it, and then you're right. If the feds aren't giving you any money, if you're taking care of it yourself, if it's private donations, it isn't any of our business anymore. But if you want us to pay for it, it's our business. Deal with it. Agreed. Speaking of Rawr. deal with it, it's time for this week's Ass Head of the Week. <laughs> for this week's This week's Ass Out of the Week sent a tweet and a Facebook post out. Same thing to Dr. Ben Carson saying two words. And those two words, I won't say and Sam will. But they <laughs> simply say F you. And, you know, I think I want to play the game the left plays. So here's what I'm going to do. Now, Sam, think real hard. Close your eyes here. Between all okay. of the Republican candidates, mm -hmm. what is Dr. Ben Carson Name a characteristic of Dr. Ben Carson that's different than anybody else running. He's a neurosurgeon. No, no. Okay, fine. I'm not going to spell it out for you. I think we all know why people are attacking Ben Carson, okay? No one wants to come out and say it. Everyone wants to avoid the GOP elephant in the room. But I think we all know why people are attack attacking you know, Ben Carson, okay? He may not be a certain color of certain folks. I mean, that's the real reason, right? No one wants to come out and say it, but we all know why this week's ass hat of the week, Seth Rogen, comes out and says F you to Ben Carson, because he didn't say that to any other candidate, but he said it to Ben Carson. What's different about Ben Carson? Hmm. Well, I'm sure I don't have to come out and say it. You already know. See, I'm playing the game the left plays. No, no. This is funny, because Angie's in the chat room. Really quick. Our ass hat of the week followed Angie on Twitter. Awesome. Even better. Well, Angie, I pray for you, dear. Even though you hate me, I guess maybe you deserve it for hating me. Because you got followed by this week's Ass Hat of the Week. Tune in next week for another exciting installment of Ass Hat of the Week. That puts the finishing touches on this week's episode of According to Me and Bunny. We learned how manly I was, or not. We learned I'll never have a Pinterest page. We learned about the Democratic <laughs> debate. Uh, we learned who the asset of the week was. And, of course, we learned that Planned Parenthood isn't going to charge for body parts anymore. Ain't that grand? Yay! And Woo! I'm running for president. Oh, yes, and Bunny's running for president. Yeah. Bunny 2016, hashtag yeah. vagina. But until yeah. next week when we see you, good night, America. Thanks for listening. Good night, guys. Thanks.